شما یا ممکن است که بیچاره از اینا بدم ببینید چون وقتی فیلم گیرم یاد I'd like to wish you the merriest of Christmases, uh, to let the film and the sound of my voice tell you that I'm, I am well. Uh, I'm ready to come home. I've been ready to come home since about November of last year. <laughs> But I understand the situation uh, with as much news as we do get. And uh, I want you to keep the faith and realize that I love you all very dearly. Next, I'd like to again thank, the, as I did at Easter time on film, I'd like to thank the American people for the tremendous amount of support with mail and other actions that I'm not very clear about, but I know are going on. Uh, without, without the American people, this, uh, this trial we're going through would be a great deal more difficult. The Algerian ambassador to the United States, Reda Malik, and the chairman of the Central Bank of Algiers, Mohamed Mostafai, arrived at the State Department at 10 o'clock this morning to meet with Secretary of State Muskie and Deputy Secretary Warren Christopher. Two other Algerian diplomats, Ambassador to Iran, Abdel Karim Geraib, and Algerian diplomat Bir Hossein, arrived an hour later. Both men had just flown from Tehran, where they saw all 52 American hostages. The Algerians are expected to tell Muskie the condition of the hostages and that Iranian and American statements are making negotiations difficult, both sides taking too hard a public line. Sources here believe the United States will take the first course, reworking earlier proposals so that negotiations can be kept alive. Rebecca Sobel, NBC News. About 60 members of Tehran's diplomatic corps showed up to hear Prime Minister Mohammad Rajai. The room in the reception hall of the foreign ministry building where they sat is just a few doors from the room where three of the hostages have been held since the embassy takeover. Rajai took the opportunity to explain Iran's conditions for the release of the hostages again. The only new element was a suggestion that the United States could release some of Iran's frozen assets while negotiations continue over funds that are tied up in court challenges here. The prime minister accused the United States of not bargaining in good faith but of, quote, making conspiracies against us. He mentioned the Iran-Iraq war as an example, and again accused the United States of helping Iraq. Rajai also claimed Iran could keep the hostages indefinitely. He mentioned the climate where they are being held is good, thought to be a reference to the Caspian Sea area, where reports have indicated most of the hostages are now being held, even though they were apparently brought to Tehran for the Christmas service. Rajai opened the floor to questions after his speech. Only one ambassador, a Nigerian, asked for clarification on the main sticking points in the negotiations. Rajai answered, quote, There are some difficulties in evaluating the wealth of the former Shah and his relatives, which we think we need time to investigate. The Dean Stewart, NBC News.